20 years ago, Jack met a woman with hair as red as fox fur and luminous green eyes which rarely blinked. She had a freckled breast, pale skin, and long, almost prehensile toes, which she used to pick up dropped hair bits. That's the part I'm reading. Because oh. mine had prehensile toes, the part that I am supposed to be. Oh. <laughs> I don't know, you have to go somewhere else. I'm not sure what. Yeah, then you forget that prehensile here, toe. Sit down. Thing. Speaking of drugs, let's talk about the book. Could I have a shot of something? Just kidding. Are we rolling? Electronic pollution. Is that more significant? Or is the fact that the government is hiding it? Oh, God, the man said. Oh, God. Sometimes to get over the fence, you need a little boost, said the hooker he was in bed with. You know, if, if, if in fact, electrical pollution is affecting us all from everything, um, do we get rid of it, which means getting rid of our civilization? Or do we talk about it and then decide if 3% of the population dying early, getting cancer, having DNA changes. But Obama can't do is any more than it. he's already doing. It's too much. Uh, we <laughs> has, this has to be delayed for 15 years. That, we'll all be dead then. So this gal picks up this guy at a bar and takes him home. And uh, when the guy goes into her bedroom, all he uh, sees are fluffy animals. Fluffy animals on the bureau, fluffy animals on the TV, shelves and shelves of fluffy animals. So what? The guy thinks the gal's got great tits, a great ass. Fuck the fluffy animals after they make love. The guy turns to the girl and asks, so how was I? And she says, you can take anything off the bottom shelf. There's a lot of evidence. I mean, there, if you go online and Google electrical pollution or dirty electricity mm -hmm. or stray voltage, you can spend a month reading. The police photographer, a gawky kid, tall just out of Columbia Green College, moonlighting from the local newspaper, took pictures of Stickman's body still hanging from the tree branch. The flash lit up the corpse, its fingertips as fat as balloon animals, the hands swollen dark from pooled blood, the forearms as big as sausages, like Popeye, Jack thought. There's a law in show business. Every uh, invention in show business, in filmmaking, that was invented to save time and money doesn't save time or money. Spaced in a neat row in front of the individual cabins were five early 60s concave circular chairs like an array of miniature radio telescopes. One of the suits involved state police who used handheld radar guns who were getting testicular cancer. The Hudson Valley Electric Company pylons stalked like War of the World tripods down the hillside, across the field, and through the Rip Van Winkle trailer park. And every invention of our brain because our brains are imperfect, mm -hmm. um, eventually turn out to be destructive. In the second ring at Geigerman's, Jack, gloved and in street clothes, circled away from Hooper, who, grinning, flicked a few feints. Jack backpedaled. So we tango, Jack said. What do you got for me? I surely got something for you, Hooper said. He popped Jack in his already bruised face. Jack jabbed, but Hooper was too fast. He got in under Jack's left and opened the cut over Jack's right eye. I meant information, Jack said, blinking away the blood. Hooper cracked Jack's nose, which started to bleed. Again, Jack jabbed and missed. When I was a kid, Jack said, I, I used to be a street fighter. Pity we're not in the street.